can't build our way out of this one. You know, we've got to use nature to do what she does best. You know, if you've got a slab of concrete, the water's got nowhere to go. If you've got a nice big wetland, then you can, you can store an awful lot. And then on the coast, we're gonna have sea level rise coming and more storm surges. And again, if you're able to restore your coastal wetlands, um, that's great for people. It can help to kind of reduce some of that energy. Um, and then it's great for our native birds. Uh, you know, we've got those four amazing, unique birds. Four native Hawaiian water birds uh, like to utilize this area. Um, we've got the Hawaiian stilt, uh, the Hawaiian coot, the Hawaiian gallinule, and the Kaloa duck. The uh, gallinule and the uh, Kaloa duck and the stilt all nest here. Uh, the coots don't, we've never seen a coot nest here. They tend to migrate over to Ni'ihau during nesting season. It was uh, established in the mid 90s. Uh, this area, the Manaw Plain used to have uh, a lot of wetlands. Um, stories say that you could paddle a canoe from Waimea town all the way to Pulahali during the wet season. Uh, those wetlands were drained for agricultural purposes in the 1800s and a lot of habitat was lost. Um, so the state's trying to put some of that back. This was the first of the, those projects. World Wetlands Day is on the 2nd of February and uh, it's just a great opportunity for us to, to think about all the things that wetlands do for us that we don't often think about or, or maybe even know about. So um, wetlands offer all these kind of ecosystem services and uh, one of the things they can do is to, to help purify our water. So if you've got some um, flood events coming down and there's pollutants in there and, and toxins and so on, and then you've got a great wetland in the way, uh, it just gives time for those pollutants and toxins to settle out so they don't make it into the ocean. And in the same way, they can help us control sediment. So, you know, we know on the islands, we have these huge flood events and then you get the nasty brown water. There, we can't swim in the ocean and it damages the reef, but that's one way that wetlands can really help us. They can trap that sediment and then uh, it settles and it doesn't make it out to the reef. With climate change, um, maybe the most important thing that, that wetlands can do for us is to help store flood water in those big flood events. It has some cultural purpose, of course, um, and also it's this perfect ecosystem that we have water provided from Whitehall Reservoir that we pump through to stop from uh, the birds from getting botulism. It's um, protected um, with fencing from the pigs, so it's kind of this perfect habitat that the birds have started taking over. And we're lucky enough to have nesting of the moorhen, uh, not the stilts yet, and um, the Kaloa duck. I think it's all about resilience. Um, because those ducks are real survivors. You know, they got down to really small numbers in the 1950s. And then with the creation and the protection of the National Wildlife Refuges and then amazing wetlands like here at the Makao Waki Cave Reserve and Kava'eli and some of the other big sites, especially on Kauai, um, where a real Noah's Ark for these birds. And their numbers have come back up. Um, but going forward, just like us humans, um, the Kaloa are going to need wetlands to kind of sustain them in the future and wetlands that kind of function with the new reality of, of climate change. So a lot of the wetland creation um, that we need to be thinking about and, and doing will benefit humans and stop those kind of big flood events and, and stop all the sedimentation or at least be part of the puzzle of, of helping with those climate change impacts.